Yeah, okay. No, the Just run them My door? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, shit, the first time I, uh, fucking got a gun, I was, like, 21, or not 21, 20, uh, probably, like, 20. Okay. Um, but, shit, I wasn't even talking about that. What I was talking about was, uh, shit, honestly, my mom doesn't even really probably know that I have a gun. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, but that's just because, uh, there's nothing really, uh, no reason really to bring it up. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, some things you ain't got to share with family. Like, some it's things just, you know are going to are gonna cause them to, to jump off the fucking chain. Especially since, like, you know, like, I, I tell, I probably tell you because, like, you actually give a shit about guns. So it's like, you're not arguing about shit, you're, you're, you're a, talking about shit. It's you a natural interest, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, if I wanted to argue with somebody, I'd tell my mom probably, you know. <laughs> but uh, if you're like up in your debate skills and shit. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm right. grown ass man. I'm just trying to, you know, exercise my rights, you know, my way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only reason my pop knows is because we was going to uh, my grandpa's uh, my grandpa's house in another state. Okay. And uh, I mean, he was dying, so you know, we were. Uh, I was living with my folks at the time. Yeah. You know, uh, waiting because uh, I was in the middle of transition, probably trying to go to school. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, my grandpa got sick. You know, he was dying. We went up there to go, you know, chill with them. At the time, I had a gun. Okay. And you know, I wasn't gonna tell my folks unless I had to, because you know, I had already had it before I moved in with them. Yeah. So it was just kind of awkward, you know. I just kind of had to Can this be? Know, put it to the side and be discreet. Yeah, yeah. Um, but shit, my own, I put it in the closet I was staying at in the room. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden one day my 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 uncle came through and he told my dad, "Hey, yo, I found this sick ass gun. Grandpa had in the in the closet. I didn't even know he had this gun. This this is a dope ass gun." Yeah. <laughs> and you mind if I take this? And I'm hearing it. Yeah, I'm hearing. Pipe, it. I'm hearing it from. Room. I'm hearing it from the other room, and I'm like, "Wait, what closet? Don't be, don't be touching my <laughs> <laughs> what closet." And I looked over. And like, it was my shit. Uh, he was uh, and I was like, "Oh, yo, fuck, uh, sweet you, come up, uh, Where you get that from?" Damn. So I had to tell him on the law. I was like, hey, yo, Unc, man, you can't have that, bro. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, he, he seemed disappointed, too. Like, damn, he was like, okay, oh, okay. Man. He was like, oh, For yeah. respect, though, I would have thought he came with, like, uh, that shit ain't yours, little kid yeah, or whatever the uh, fuck. And then, so, you see some papers about this shit, bro. Obviously, my dad had to find out after that point because it's just like, whatever happened to that gun? Oh, uh, okay. And your uncle was like, "Yo, get in here." It's your son's gun. Your kid claiming out here, bro. He kid claiming just, gun. I, I, I had to tell my pops, I was like, "Hey, pops, you know that gun you found? That's mine. That's your, that's your boys. That's mine." Because <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave it at the house. I didn't want to leave it in in California where there's a, you know, right. There's a kid in the house and I'm not around. Exactly. Is exactly. that is that more responsible? Isn't it more responsible to bring it with me? You're taking it with you, yeah, bro. And make sure that it's disarmed and like. All the more reason to always be armed, bro. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you only got one. And I know I got a safe and everything at home, and right. I got it locked up, but still, man, you know. Just uh. It's just better to have it on you. Yeah, I get nervous when it's not around me. I don't want nobody to get hurt, bro. Same. That's just a dangerous weapon. Same. And you gotta be careful. You gotta know what you're doing. And if somebody comes in contact with it that has no education about gun safety, yeah, uh, it's it might be cookies. Beyond that, bro, I mean, if if I ain't got a gun or a knife, I feel like I'm I'm going without something. Like I'm fucking, I'm I'm missing something from my fucking. Waistband, bro. Like I need, I need something to ground me. True, man. <laughs> I need something to ground me, and that's gonna be a gun or a knife or some type of uh, I don't know. Like in this case, it's gonna be some type of weapon, right? Because shit could pop off whenever, and we know this. I mean, that's true too. You're in a new city. You've never been there before. Yeah. You know. You don't know how fucking shit shakes up around town. And you're not gonna be there for how long? You been out there meeting friends and shit. You just. That makes sense. That makes sense. I was uh like eighteen and nineteen when I got mine. It was just after high school, and 
Yeah, I mean, I thought I needed it. But I also live in an area where, like, a lot of motherfuckers have guns, too. Yeah. It was, it was somewhat, uh, it was somewhat rural. So, so the, the, pretty much, like, the whole county was, like, a rural, like, a rural county. Whenever I'd invite friends back from, like, uh, the bigger cities, they'd be like, damn, you live out in the fucking sticks, out here in the fucking boonies, bro. <laughs> but the benefit, nah, the benefit to it is that you could. Like freely shoot your guns out the fucking window of your car. And Beautiful like, man. See, I didn't yeah, hear that bro. growing up. That shit was bullshit. I didn't experience that till I moved out into the country. Mm-hmm. And and that necessarily is what it was. I mean, like folks had like little lots, like a couple little acres here and there. So whenever they could set up and uh, like you know set up a, a cool backstop, we'd set set up some targets and and twink on a, on a weekend or something like that. You know, just shooting guns. This was this was way back in fucking uh, 2007, 2000, nah, nah, 2009, 2010 probably. So ammo was cheap, guns were cheap. God damn, bro, it was the fucking golden years. And I, I wish, I wish I was much more of a criminal back then. Like now, in retrospect, because I'd have, I'd have saved up way much more money and bought way many more guns. Because yeah, nowadays. Guns are expensive, ammo's expensive, motherfuckers gotta download them and print them off the fucking internet to have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, That's wild. I'm trimming this weed, bro, and it's fucking ugly. I mean, just take off all the, all the larvas, bro. It's fucking ugly, bro. You could, you could butter the whole thing, bro. It's an ugly-ass branch. You ever just see some branches and they're just fucking... Ugly as shit. Retarded looking. They're just fucking. Oh, damn, this little, no heart ass niggas, man. This little branch didn't eat nothing growing <laughs> up. <on. laughs> little African plant. Little, <laughs> little, little African plant, bro. Third world country. Big stomach ass having plant, bro. Damn. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I told you, I used to have a, a like a hippie. Homie, live, when I was living out in that in those rural parts, this dude would uh would take whole like like whole untrimmed like untrimmed nugs untrimmed like little branches off his trees and after they were dried up, and uh, he would just grind grind that shit down grind and keep it. it uh yeah no keep it in a, a one of those like rolling trays okay. that are really popular right now like a raw rolling tray but like because he was an old head he. He had like we had a glass rolling tray, or I think it was okay. a wood rolling tray. Okay, so it looked some fancy. Really hippie shit. Yeah, really yeah. Really ha- hippie homemade. Some heady, some really hippie heady shit. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And uh, and he smoked off of that, so okay. he smoked the entire plant. This nigga was a the roster. whole motherfucking thing. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, whole thing. The Nothing whole went apple? to waste. Nothing went to waste. Ooh, that should be a club like the the Apple Core Club. Yeah. And uh, smoking with him was cool. I mean, he he had some he had some fire on deck too. But uh, if it was ever like in a large circle, like more than more than just him and myself, because if we were if we were matching back to back, we always had some some fire shit. But uh, if not, he's my whole thing. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't manicuring <laughs> nothing. Like you smoking fan leaves, water leaves, everything, anything that looks like THC. Putting put, put that bitch <laughs> to the chipper, bro. <laughs> Real time, bro. Smoking marijuana mulch and shit, bro. Yeah, like it, it take it. Motherfuckers don't understand. It take work to be a motherfucking cannabis person, bro. Like, it does, bro. Like, this is sticky, icky is annoying as fuck, bro. The industry ain't what it cut out to be. Yeah, this is real farm work, y'all. It is. Like you don't want this. I wish I had me five dozen Mexicans. And then, well, it makes sense that the that like legacy growers are having a tough time getting into commercial. Yeah. And that's why a lot of them are having to like go into uh, using much more technical and mechanical methods with like machine trimming and machine watering and fucking yeah. like yeah it loses some aesthetic value but a lot of them really what they're worried about is just pumping out that THC number that fucking that one strain variety at the commercial level. This is true. And it's taken away a whole lot of uh it's taken away a lot of heart from the industry too. A lot of big money big money fish coming into the scene. Because nobody likes trimming weed. Yeah. I don't even like trimming weed. 
I mean, it's okay to pass the time if you got time to pass. Yeah, but niggas is busy, bro. Niggas is busy, dude. Niggas got shit to do. That's what I mean. I say, next time, I'll, I need to just outsource this bitch. <laughs> just hack them down and send them off. And, yeah, and they just, just give up a portion of this shit. They send you the, back your product, and that's it. Just give them, you know? No. Yeah. Part of it is that, like, the grow kind of was, like, a little fucked up, too, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, that's weather, I guess. Weather and neglect, you feel me? Yeah. Sorry, my plants. We had shit to do, But you know? got shit to do, bro. I get That's it. I'm saying. Like, it's on the Can't be out here. Can't be out here babying the babies. You yeah, feel me? That's what I'm saying. I need resilient niggas with me. You gotta stand on your own. <laughs> well, either, either you make it on your you own make, or you, you get don't. caught. You're caught laughing. You make it, I'm smoking. You die with your mouth open type shit. Die with your mouth <laughs> open. See, a lot of these heads aren't even heads, bro. No. That's the fucked up part. You gotta kind of just cut this bitch off, just like that. This dude was cool, man. This hippie, this hippie head, this hippie head dude. Yeah. He was, uh, he was cool with it, man. He was, uh, he was really down to earth. Unfortunately, you know, like life happens. One day, the dude got uh, got caught up in a situation and he almost got robbed. And yeah, that's uh, what you're telling, he, you know? he fell out of uh, he fell out of trust with everybody, bro. Yeah. I mean, but that's life, man. I mean, and, and sometimes it comes with the game, especially in the area that we were living in. Like yeah. that shit was hotly contested, bro. A lot of opposition, a lot of a lot of player haters too, right? A lot of yeah. little, a lot of little grimy motherfuckers who think they could come up on somebody else's hard work. work. Exactly. Exactly. It is, it is, but um, I'm sure, I'm sure he's doing the most for uh, for his own lot in life, for his family and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, after after that, like uh, access to uh, to like guns and and other illicit items, I don't know. It felt easier to come into it felt easier to like reach out and ask and reach out and talk about i, I had a I had a way with um i don't know i just had a way of getting myself into situations where like access to the stuff was realizable yeah and um so guns and drugs came easy i mean it was it was just part it just became part of life i feel it and uh, now I know that going into uh, a more professional setting, that that same skill, that that same social toolbox that I had about like how to quote unquote interview people and, and find out you know where the guns at, yo where the drugs at. Now now I could use that to to my benefit in in, in a professional setting for professional networks. Mm, so on now. Point. And, and now, I mean, I, I don't even got to be, like, that close with them. So the sharper I've gotten through school, through work, it just means that I don't I don't have to be around, like, that long. I guess it's, I guess it's, uh, I've become better at building a rapport and, and being trustworthy. Yeah. To, to the point where, like, you know, like, as adults... Few people got time to bullshit and, and, and try to develop a relationship on some on some neighborhood friend type shit, you know, because we don't even live in the same neighborhood anymore. Like we just gotta know how to cut through all that superficial shit and get down to brass tacks essentially. That's true. So but like before, I might have had um I mean I was never gang related, right? But I might have had affiliates like people who are affiliate with with my brand, with me as a person, with how I handled myself. Like if they, if 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 I, you know, as Alex, if somebody knew me as Alex and knew what I was capable of, if somebody else dropped my name, it's because they're in my circle, and it's just the brand that we stand behind. Yeah. Okay. And now in a professional setting, I mean that could be any number of things. That brand could be a mission. That that brand could be a, a company. 
True. And, and it's about expanding the, uh, the that social toolbox to build the rapport and and do work in the company's name. So if, for the sake of argument, I'm looking for guns or I'm looking for drugs, it ain't going to be for me to do them. It's going to be for the, for the organization to benefit off of. And in, in, in that sense, True. yeah, in that sense, I'm an, I'm an affiliate to the organization, but everybody else around me, I mean, they could, they could benefit from the fact of just being associates with me, yeah. knowing Alex in person. Oh, I, I got somebody, I know somebody who knows somebody, or I know Alex. They could come to us for it. That's true. And there's a, I, I guess there's like an element of uh there's like a coolness factor to it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I was gunning for when I was younger. Is I, I wanted to, to embody cool, like being cool or, or, or just being well known, having that reputation as getting shit done. I think we all did, man. Honestly. Right? Yeah, and that's that's what pushed me to go to school, to return to school and and uh, give up give up trying to be somebody on the street because everybody is a nobody on the street that's true and that opened my eyes to the fact that not everybody is somebody in corporate my bad are you good so now wanting to be somebody in corporate means that i i mean i do have to start as a nobody but because i'm a nobody just got to go back and, and use those skills that i have sharpened up on the street and put it towards something that's more, that has better prospects, you know what I'm saying? Better prospects. Better results. Better profitability, better better results. More, all, in, all in all, just better more, for... More, uh, more influence. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, that, that might be the difference, really, between... I mean, I'm just thinking, I'm spitballing here, between the difference between a, an associate and an affiliate, like, a, I feel like an affiliate is more, is more closely tied, almost, uh, like, at a contractual level, where an associate is just somebody you know offhand, huh. but for whatever reason, I think uh, the gray area between an associate and an affiliate is enough to be able to win you over to be able to uh have an associate win you over when an affiliate might disappoint you and you're like it's like you're tied to an affiliate by contract and an associate by reputation if that makes sense yeah interesting so while you both may have while both you and an affiliate may have like a brand image you're trying to keep up yeah. You and this other associate are automatically two different people, but through your association together, like that, that creates a sort of reputation of what y'all can do together. And and I, I guess in that sense, because it might not be publicly broadcast, like the 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 circle is tighter, the circle is neater. Okay. Through an association than through an affiliation. Because in an affiliation, I mean, by contract, you guys are pretty much tied. And unless, unless uh, your affiliate or yourself, like if they were to violate some part of the contract, then then the affiliation would necessarily break up. And you'd have to go through all the procedures to do that. And in an association, not so much. I mean, I feel like it's a lot looser, a, a lot of... A lot more loosely bound, more loosely bound. Okay, makes sense. So I guess it goes back to uh, uh, a youngster's dream of, of just wanting to to have a circle, to to run with the circle of, of some of some of some do good motherfuckers, bro. Not some, not some no good motherfuckers, you know. <laughs> no, we all, man. You told all these things when you're young, man. Hell yeah. And you never listen to the right people. Never. Ever. 
You think back, you don't know why you didn't listen to the right people. Right. But, uh... But sometimes they were right, man. Sometimes they were right. Sometimes they were right. Yeah, and my fam, my fam told me, like, every now and then, whenever they met somebody in my circle, they were like, oh, that ain't, that ain't good people to have around. Like, they saw some, some things that, that I probably could have predicted if I had paid closer attention. And then there were other people that they were wrong about. I mean, like that, that happens too. That does happen too. That does happen too. But... But that also comes with the territory of growing older. Like now that I'm older, obviously, my folks, my folks don't give a shit who I uh, who I keep as an associate. I mean, they're not affiliated with me, right? So they ain't that close. We're we're not we're not tied. We're not bound by contract. Yeah. So they just uh, they just bless me with any attention that I that I, I need as far as like uh, an opinion or some advice when it comes to family, when it comes to friendship. As far as business goes, all they can give me is uh, is is their form of blessing and uh, and their best wishes because I mean motherfuckers are devils out here and and they know how business is broken down. I don't think they envisioned me going into this field, but what did they envision you? They they envisioned me going like doing doing something like like a like a doctor like a scientist and shit. A lot of that had to do with what my interests were when I was younger too. I was very uh, mathematical oriented and science oriented. Yeah. But um. But I was also a big talker. I was also a, a uh, very talkative, not a big talker. I mean, I'll talk big every now and then if I have to. But I was a very sociable young person, so yeah. I got in trouble for talking in class. I got. <laughs> Detention for distracting motherfuckers from the schoolwork, all that. You're just trying to talk to motherfuckers, man. Exactly. I've, I've been networking since I was a young blind. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. I mean, it all panned out in the end, given what yeah. I do now. Sure, man. I had kids like you at my at my work. Yeah. Good ass kids, bro. I just could not stop talking. Yeah. Damn, bro. I got all that. No problems with you. You just talk to me as much, bro. Yo, that's probably the reason I started the podcast, because if you ain't listening, I could just be talking to nobody. <laughs> Shit. But it's good, though, because it also allows me to develop my social skill and, and talk less, but talk more concise, uh, speak, you know, with better precision, like, exercise my my use of like different terms yeah so that i'm not having to like beat around the bush especially if i'm speaking like different types of people because i mean you know we speak differently to to lawyers and judges than we speak to mechanics and engineers you know yeah no that's fair that's fair. so all that practice comes in handy and that is a, a major reason of why the podcast got launched is to to be able to put that to practice. Okay. Okay. With the way we speak, with the way, uh, with the way we pronounce and enunciate our cadence, our fucking our vocabulary, all that shit comes in handy. Yeah, I like the. It's important. Yeah. And uh, little by little, you know, the plan. The plan is little by little as we improve our dialogue. The listeners are then able to improve with us, just listening in. I mean, all this shit becomes subconsciously learned on their part. And before they know it, like in their day-to-day interactions, they'll be talking about some shit. And then they'll realize, damn, like I, what I just said was some corporate cowboy shit. Like, that's, I got that off the podcast. Which you have, if you haven't, folks, visit us on Instagram. That's... The corporate cowboys page. Oh, and, uh, still going, huh? Yeah, bro. <laughs> and on, on Patreon, I've been, I've been good. I've been good. You know, minding, minding my words and all. Like, hey, man. N- nothing we gotta knock out yet. Um, but uh, follow us on the Patreon page. Also, you can subscribe for uh, for a small donation. 
throw that at the, at the organization. That goes towards uh, expenses and uh, legal fees, obviously. Make it rain, bitch. And uh, if you if you find the links, I think the links are still floating out there somewhere. If you want to shoot us a direct donation, you got a cash app or a PayPal floating out there, and send some physical mail. Send us some some quote unquote. Uh, what's the opposite of contraband? Uh, okay. Because we can't like w w w what's a what's a, a parallel to contraband? Like parallel to contraband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I can't explicitly ask them to send us contraband, but I mean, we kind of want want them to send us contraband. Just say it. Send. Send send, send, us, send send items of interest. <laughs> a, send items of interest to P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, yeah. 95742. And, uh, we'll, no contraband, please. Yeah, no contraband. Uh, items of interest are fine. Items of interest are fine. Things that, that, that spark uh, the imagination. <laughs> yeah. Spark. Spark. Spark motherfucking imagination. No, spark it. Send it. I send I've, it. I've seen a motherfucker get sparked with a with a. I've seen somebody's imagination get sparked. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nah. Um. They even me. Yo, <laughs> you can send that to PO Box thirty three seventy two Rancho Cordova California nine five seven four two. That shit gets checked uh once every week, once every two weeks, and then it's forwarded to us on Corporate Cowboys. So, by all means, do that. And until we have any sponsors, I mean, we ain't gonna be running ads. Yo, the first couple of episodes, <laughs> funny story. Uh, the first couple of episodes when I started, I would uh, I would pretend to like uh, I'd pretend to be sponsored by like everyday items. And this is back when I was like, yo, everything could be a fucking sponsor. Everything could be a fucking weapon. Like this post-it note pack could be a fucking. You know, a sponsor that would like without post its, we wouldn't have post it notes and shit like that, right? Okay, so okay, like I, I okay. went through like everything I could find in my room that was like professional related, like yo, these scissors, like this fucking ballpoint pen. And then I started going into knives and glocks and shit, like yo, this episode is sponsored by Glock, fuck it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hella funny, <laughs> yo, man. You think you could get big enough to where like you could get people to sponsor you? Oh, yeah, if. Only by saying, like, the only way I mention people on my podcast is if I go tell you to go fuck yourself. Well, I, I feel like that that comes uh, with the territory. Right, because so here's my sponsors. Fuck you, Geico. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that would come with the territory after we've established that reputation as corporate cowboys. So, like, if, if, if and when... We're in the market for sponsorship because ultimately I I would rather not have sponsorships and just have it, have it come from the members, right? Can't, can't we just be like, if you want to be a sponsor, then I get to talk shit about you. That's how you're a sponsor. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can. I'm, I'm sure we can work out some sort of contract, some sort of agreement. So, yo, Geico, if you can hear me. You we'll fucking, sponsor you, you fucking bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get us. You can have us on contract. Our listeners get to hear about your outrageous rate saving 15% in under 15 minutes or whatever the fuck your catch is. You fucking and then, system establishment, and bitch then, ass nigga. And then we could tear apart your fucking organization on air as far as its hierarchy and its structure. How, how, you, feel, how you feel about that? How you feel about that? Because you gotta know. You gotta know, like, if it ain't the CEO listening to this fucking podcast, yo, CEO, you gotta know that somebody in your organization is a corporate cowboy. And yeah. sooner, sooner or later, they're gonna pop up on your radar. One day. And when they pop up on your radar, the day that you're looking on your radar, it's gonna be too late. Too late. <laughs> too late. You should have sponsored us. That's just, that's just. Should have sponsored us. That's some corporate cowboy shit right there. You know, because at the end of the day, we're still gonna tell you. We're still gonna be honest, like, right. okay, yeah, these are some pretty good rates. These are some pretty good rates. They these are some pretty good rates. They, they would bundle, save me some money. Fucking bundle the savings and shit. <laughs> they would bundle me some money. But fuck you. At fuck you, day, Geico. At the end of the day, it is fuck you because you're corporate. 
and you've been and y'all have been alive too long, man. I think corporate, uh, uh, corporate, corporate in itself has got to innovate, and that's what corporate cowboys are about. Yeah. If, we could, if we could reform organizational structures, they would all be fluid. They would all be much more agile. Big ass, too big to fail whales wouldn't exist. How about that? Too big to fail whales would not exist. Fuck you. They would all have been hunted to extinction. <laughs> Jesus. Like they the, would all have been hunted to extinction. Like the mighty dodo bird. Yeah. Wait, was the dodo bird hunted? I don't know, dude. I don't know if I made that up or if I've seen that from Ice Age. No, uh, the dodo bird is extinct, but I don't know if it was hunted. Yeah. But that's the difference. That's the difference. You know the difference between uh, Geico and the dodo bird? What? That we're hunting Geico, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you like that? Okay. I see Geico okay. getting free promos and shit off, okay. off the backs of corporate cowboys. It's all, it's all love, though. It's all love, though. Yeah, man. As long as we get paid. Treat us to a little business lunch or whatever and a, and a yeah. fucking side deal. Yeah. And uh, we'll be, or you'll be in our good graces kind of thing. One hand washes the other type thing. Yeah. Just stay away from my back. Because I know how you guys stab. Stab the little people in the back. Nah, that's right. I mean, at, at that level, we probably have some executive level insurance, bro. I mean... You don't think Geico has different tiers for for their clients? They gotta have different tiers for corporate cats. Yeah. But that's the name of the game. The name of the game is standing out and getting noticed. User. The thing is, is that <clears throat> we don't necessarily want the spotlight. I feel like. Um, that's the difference. That's another difference because uh, I, I was thinking what, what would be a good theme, a good title for this uh, episode is Associates versus Affiliates. I think that's another difference between Affiliates and Associates is that Affiliates always want to be known as being affiliated. Why? Because it's contractual. And in that contract, I mean, there is some understanding, there is some expectation that the relationship, that the affiliation is... is profitable like it's fucking it's it's a it's a beneficial right okay okay while in an association i mean you could have no good associates you could be you could have associates that are up to no good associates that you don't have on the payroll associates no one else knows some some undercover notorious nefarious clandestine associates <laughs> that 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 nobody knows exist but people know who they are type shit, you know? Okay. And I think, yeah, that, that comes with the territory of, of, of uh, looser connection, but uh, tighter network. The, the need, the necessity for uh, trust and reputation than uh, popularity. Because you don't have to be a popular associate. You just got to be effective. You, you just got to be a motherfucking metal man or, or fucking... So somebody could be counted on a, a, a dependable product. A dependable, dependable asset. Product. A dependable asset. asset. I like yeah, that. yeah. And in an affiliation, I mean, kind of rolling the dice on just the brand name, whether or not it is a uh, profitable relationship. In an association, you could tap them on the shoulder whenever you need some kind of service or some kind of product. Okay. Yeah. So we're playing terms here, huh? We are. Yes, sir. Yeah. Maybe not coining. I don't think we're the first ones to use them, but we're definitely uh, defining them. Yeah. Defining them and, and uh, combing through the definition. Okay. I like it. I like it. The what first job I had, I don't know if I told you, the first job I had... That put me onto that term was uh, In and Out. In and Out. In and Out huh? Burger on the West Coast, yeah. And it's only on the West Coast as of today, which is, speaking of fucking proof of life, Wednesday, December 29, 2021. As of today, uh, In and Out is just a West Coast venture, right? Oh, uh, shit, for real? Yeah. So they're only on the West Coast. They're like uh, synonymous, not synonymous, analogous to uh, the East Coast. Um, 
but is it uh, Shake Shack? Is it, isn't it Shake Shack out there? I don't know. I don't Some know fucking that. burger and fries joint on the East Coast. I don't want to be out there like that. But uh, in and out started as a West Coast endeavor. Did it now? And I, I don't even go out to eat as it is. But uh, having started working at in and out they uh, start all their little crew members, all their little entry-level employees off with the title of associate. And uh, that struck me as odd because it's the first time that I heard uh, the term used in that manner. I'd, I'd always heard the term associate whenever I read about it in books or journals uh, by law enforcement. And mostly when it had to do with like organized crime. Okay. Uh, like the mafia, like the Italians and the fucking Jews and shit, right? Okay. So whenever it had to do with associates, it had to do with like, I don't know, some, some RICO case was coming down and... Like, they'd always release details of, like, all oh, the lower-level associates and the mid-level capos and shit like that. Yeah. Okay. So, hearing hearing and, and learning about what associates do at the corporate level, you know, being in and out, hearing about what they do, I mean, it's necessarily like being a, a low-level associate for, uh, uh, not, I mean, a less, a less criminal family, a more legitimate family, which is just a, a burger company. And I believe they're still family-owned. Okay. So that, I mean, I really took that to heart and was able to internalize it and, and, and really uh, integrated it into my vocabulary where folks that I know because we're all associates on the lower rungs. Folks that I know became my associates. And I mean, in life, my opinion is that, or my belief is that we're all entry level into life. Forever. Entry level forever is what I say. Okay. Because anybody could be let go at any moment. I mean, no no CEO is safe. <laughs> no CEO is safe from getting fucking fired. Everything is right to work, fire at will out here, you know? That's true. So even the fucking CEO is entry level forever. Like, that, that fool ain't any different from us. Actually, some of the niggas do that contract, so. Yeah, but, I mean, for any reason, they get voted on. And what are they left with? Some kind of, uh... Uh, compensation or indemnification. A compensation is what it would be. Yeah. Some compensation. I mean, and and the company might be, might be in the best interest of the company to just cash him out and part ways with his motherfucker. Yeah. Okay. See. Okay. And it is 2021, folks. Don't get me twisted. CEOs could be male and female. So. Yes, get rid of that motherfucker. With or without the dick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Equality. Hey. Fucking niggas up. Hey. Fucking. Okay. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say, kind of like I said, motherfuckers with, with or without dicks. I was gonna say, hey, uh, niggas with or without pussy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey. Ooh, okay, okay. Getting deep with you, huh? Yeah. That shit's funny. Introverted, man. Yep. Inverted. Yeah. But um, I think that's also where I learned to, to just start gender neutral. I'm not going to say I was ahead of the curve. Like, you know, I'm not going to use my middle finger to like push up my glasses up on my nose and be like, whoa, I will fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but, but as a professional, like it put me in line in, in those steps to, uh, to treat everybody on the same level. Like, I, I had already known that bitches can be petty. I already known that motherfuckers can be petty too, right? Like, in, yeah. in corporate, it's just that much more cutthroat. It's that much more petty than the streets are even. I mean, if you think street politics are a bitch, imagine office politics. Oh, like, when they're in full swing. Super petty. Exactly. So, having to deal with that, I mean, put... Uh, opened my mind up to putting everybody on the same level as far as respect goes, as far as trust goes. You know, I mean, trust has uh, has room to expand with time and with uh, as you work on projects together with individuals. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, I, I would treat everybody the same way, and it, it it got to the point where like I was already dealing with 
diverse peoples, diverse populations, where, like, if I didn't know, like, like, my name, like, our name, Alex, like, Alex is a unisex name, so if I didn't know, like, the, the person I'm dealing with was male or female, I was automatically going to they. Okay. I was automatic, like, it was just automatic. Okay. And it got to the point where, like, even if the name was... I don't know, Sandy's kind of unisex too, I guess. But even if it got to, like, a feminine-ass-sounding name, yeah. like, I would still say they. Or, like, a masculine-sounding name, they, regardless. Okay. And, uh, and, and I, it got to the point where I was kind of, uh, I was kind of, uh, dehumanizing associates along the way to, to just keep them on, like, a, a professional level. Because okay. it uh, like this was after high school, and after high school, I really didn't cultivate too many friendships. Um, yeah. It was more so professional relationships, you know. Yeah, no, I feel you. So a lot of people were 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 days. Like I would just gen, I was just non-gender or neutrally gendered motherfuckers left and right. And okay. I I don't know if they might have taken it as like a sign of res- respect or disrespect because. We could have been standing together, and I would have I would have called you like they. I would refer you I would refer to you as they even in front of you. Okay. You know I mean? So like, if uh, if we're if we're together and like there's a, a third person, let's say Dave, and I'm talking to Dave about you right in front of you, I would say like yeah. Uh, if I'm not using your name, like Alex here. Alex here, they go to uh, this, or they, they go to this school, or like they go to this gym, or whatever. Like, we're talking about uh, one another, and I would refer to Dave the same way. Like, oh, Dave, you don't know Dave? Like, Dave, uh, they, they used to go this, or they, they used to go do that. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, to me, I would treat it as like a sign of respect because I'm, I'm, I would. I would speak about people as if they were a whole other entity, as if like they, as if they were larger than than yeah, they are they in the present. Are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I felt like it was a sign of respect. And somebody didn't like it or what? Uh, no. I mean, I, I never ran into anybody like that until uh, until like two thousand, like late two thousands, bro. Like whenever this woke shit started popping up. Like, oh, don't says something to you. about their pronouns or whatever. Not like nobody's talked to me about pronouns yet. Because, I mean, I'm still neutralizing motherfuckers. Neutralizing. Neutrally gendering motherfuckers out here. Like, it ain't nothing. But now I think, um, now I think when it, when it comes to talking to and talking about individuals, I feel like there is a, a slightly more personal respect when uh when you're using their preferred pronouns but i mean we i i feel like we have to come to terms with the fact that it requires more effort right yeah so like if somebody wants to use like some special ass pronouns and this is a note to the fucking listener like if somebody wants me to use some special ass pronouns first of all if i don't know you you're a they fuck your bitch ass yeah (laughs) You're, you're a they but but like if you're Somehow, like, in my inner circle, like, you're a close associate, you're dependable, I come to you often for, for, for counsel, for advice, for services, for work. True, true. You feel me? Like, then I'm gonna pay you that much more personal respect. Otherwise, you fucking smoke dick and kick rocks. I'm gonna fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, man. Yeah, like, you can't expect complete motherfucking strangers to, like... You know, call you the pronoun you want to be called, nigga. Like, yeah, like you ain't that special. You, like, like you, come on, bro. You ain't that special. You only special when you end up on on a fucking t-shirt, R.I.P. Your yeah. bitch ass, 2021 or some shit. I'm you know, saying. that's the only time you're special in life. Maybe when you're born, if your parents give a fuck, and then when you die, if your homies give a shit. That's it. Yeah, I'll cry at your funeral, and everything. Exactly. Although, actually, when I be seeing motherfucking. Out here in this city, these motherfuckers, I don't know. I see motherfuckers doing, like, barbecues at the cemetery and shit. I don't know if you ever seen that. That sounds dope, bro. Which is kind of cool, but at the same time, I ain't never seen that at the other towns I lived in. This one was like, I went past, I swear to God, it's not even, like, one motherfucking Saturday I seen it. I seen it, like, one, two, three, four, yeah. five Saturdays in a row, all nice weather. Motherfuckers got the barbecue going. Homies got love out here, I guess, like, bro. Okay, all right. All right, peace and money. I here. mean, it, it might also be a good, uh, uh, that makes me think, it might also be a good uh, a good gathering ground and to stay out of, like, 
police purview, you know what I mean? Like if, if police ain't rolling by the cemetery, like they they think it's like a place of uh, of, of reverence, of fucking of condolences and shit, you know? Yeah. A, a place of uh, the word I'm looking grievance, a place of grievance. Like they don't think deals are going down there and 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 street politics are getting chopped up, but they could be for all we know. Yeah, that's true. I was reading the other day. Um, I didn't even think about that. I was re- I was reading the other day about how uh, uh, bums bums and, and vagabonds will actually sleep in cemeteries because because the general public just just usually doesn't kick it in cemeteries so like they ain't getting bugged by like vandals and kids harassing them on the street if they're sleeping on the streets they'll go and sleep in cemeteries. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Now I don't know how. Suspicious you are. I'm not extremely suspicious when it comes to things. Like, uh, superstitious when it comes to things like that. I'm not either, but still. At the end of the day, I mean. Sleeping in a cemetery. It's a little, I don't know if I want to do that. That's a little dank, pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> that's a dank place to be sleeping. Oh, man, you're telling me. <laughs> I'm tired. I just trim this one, man. You want to call it right here or what? Yeah, unfortunately. No, I ain't good, bro. After sure. this whole try? Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know when the next guy will be coming back. Yeah, I'll have to trim it in between everything else, you know? We can meet up on a different day. Yeah, that's a lot of fucking tree left, so Compared to what we just did. It is. Hopefully, uh... I'm just hoping for maybe one more bucket like that. Okay. Maybe... This one, maybe a, maybe another one. Yeah. I don't know. But after you press it down, you probably won't. Probably be one. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Remember last time we got two, but then we pr- compress it into one. And we got one whole one. Yeah. You know. Are you still carrying it? Yeah, it's underneath you. Oh, for sure. Sitting on it. Right on. Yo, you ever get on that, uh, did you ever look up water carry? Oh, no. That's a good little tidbit, I guess, for the for this episode. We're about to wrap this episode up, too. But, uh, water curing, supposedly, supposedly, the method goes that you, uh, cut down, cut down and, uh, fresh trim, like, not manicure, right, but, like, fresh trim, like, the larger leaves off of your buds, and then you submerge them under water and keep them submerged with uh with weights they ain't got to be heavy ass weights you don't have to put fucking five pounds on it just just enough to keep the bud underwater right and every day every other day the latest but every day you change the water out and you do that for two to three weeks depending on 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 how long it is that you want to cure it underwater and the theory is, the theory is that similar to those, um, to that project, I don't know if you, y'all ever did this project, or you remember doing that little science project that in, like, fucking kindergarten, in fucking first grade, where you take a piece of celery or a piece of lettuce, and you cut it down the middle, like, down the vein, and then you put it in two different cups, and, like, in, in, with, like, different dye, like, red dye and, and, and blue food dye, okay. and, like, they would still creep up the leaf. Even though it's off of like it's off of the actual plant, right? So like the leaf is still alive. Same okay. thing with the marijuana underwater. It's still alive underwater, and while it is underwater, it's circulating water in and out of the bud. So any last remaining toxins, any any last remaining uh, uh, minerals that are in there are getting filtered out. So when later when you pull it out to dry. And then, uh, and, and then you could choose to, to dry cure it also. But later when you pull it out to, to dry and smoke it, it's that much smoother. It's that much smoother and doesn't have uh, any of those residuals, either pesticides or fertilizers or fucking other, other dirt and stuff on it. Okay. You know what? I do have one more branch out there. Yeah? Maybe I'll try it. Okay. Yeah, you could do that, man. For two, three weeks, huh? About two to three weeks. I did it in a, in a mason jar. Okay. 
Okay. So I really only did like one to two rounds. It was one of those tall mason jars. Yeah, so you have tall mason jar and you put water in it. Mm -hmm. I only did like one to two ounces max, and uh, I forgot what I weighed it down with. It was like a little, like a round roll of rock and round roll stone, and just keep it under water. Or if you just have everything, the whole jar submerged in water, that should be fine, right? What do you mean? Like if you have it all in a jar and you just fill the jar up with water? Like if you have the jar in a bucket? Yeah. No, you have the jar. You have the weed in the jar, and you have the jar filled up with water. Oh, yeah, but you want to have the weed under the water level, is what I'm saying. Like cover it in water. Okay. Because, like, any air on top of it, like, you could still you run the risk of forming mold on that weed that's wet but not underwater. I mean, I, I, I know that uh, you're going to be changing the water every day or every other day, but I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I would have run the risk of having it mold on me while, while I'm doing that. Yeah. It's good to have you on uh, on this episode. It's good to be here, man. For sure. It's good to be here. Yeah. I know we couldn't get together during the uh, the bu fucking business cycle. During the business cycle because, uh, I mean, just priorities, bro. Yeah, no, I feel you, man. And whatnot. So, I mean, I, I did what I could. I was creating some content, reading the... Uh, I've been the, hit, the Hitman Technical Manual, which if y'all haven't, it's the first... 10 episodes of fucking season 4. Yeah, I was trying to be here for that one, man. Nah, that's good. Hey, yeah. it's totally good, bro. I, I mean, I, I read it in between uh, in between projects. Okay. So, as, as one project, yeah, I mean, as one project was finishing up, jump on the on the podcast, hit a little episode, and just doing it moving, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel really, it. But whenever we can, yeah, we, we gotta schedule some time together and really chop the game for these for these motherfuckers listening in. I don't know, for sure, man. For sure. I think so, too. So that way, as the as the podcast grows, as the organization develops, they're able to see, uh, they're able to see what their commitment builds. They're able to see some, some fruits of their interests, some fruits of their own labor in in working on becoming better themselves yeah, who via don't, the podcast. Who don't like fruit, you know? <laughs> it rules, man, especially if it's the profitable type. I'm saying. I'm the saying. fruits of the loom. Saying, oh. Bitch ass Ooh. fruit of the loom. Sponsor the podcast, you bitch. Nigga, <laughs> swear. That's why nobody wear white tight no more. <laughs> have, a, have a nice week, guys. All right, man. I'll catch you next time. Peace.